Have you ever wondered to yourself what it might be like if Robin Williams did a softcore episode of Black Mirror? Well, wonder no longer because this movie exists. Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and my ongoing quest to review every single movie Robin Williams has ever done which is really getting to be a chore here in the 2000s. This week I am looking at what seems to be sort of like an offshoot of the Triptych of Evil because it's not good um, in really any way. 2004's The Final Cut, directed and written by Omar Naim, who doesn't really have any other credits of note. Also starring Mira Sorvino, Jim Caviezel, who is Jesus in Passion of the Christ, Genevieve Buechner, Brendan Fletcher, among others. The final cut stars Robin Williams as Alan Hackman. He is a cutter. In this futuristic world where anyone can purchase a memory implant and then have at their funeral a rememory, which is like an hour 40 minute cut of all the memories of their life that are highlights, I guess. A cutter is someone who does that. They get this person's memory chip and they put together basically a movie about their lives while also removing anything that was bad. And this guy Alan sort of specializes in the people who were not super nice so he cuts a lot of you know domestic violence and cheating if you're a fan of black mirror like i am the final cut is i would sort of describe it as a mash between the entire history of you and archangel because you have that memory implant and the ability to see other people's memories as they actually happened but you also have that implant throughout time and you can see a live feed from it sort of like archangel i don't think that this movie is good i think that the concept is interesting and the idea is is there but every actor performing in this movie is basically asleep at the wheel it's very dull but let's just get into the fun facts and stuff so the final cut was used as an early experiment in digital distribution and it only played in 115 theaters i believe it was an amc exclusive at the time of its release, so it didn't get a whole lot of traction. Robin said in an interview that he took the film after Insomnia because he was sort of already on this track of wanting to continue to do scripts like this, and he thought the technology and the perplexities of the film were interesting, and thus the script and the way the story was written. I also watched a DVD extra clip of a lot of the cast being interviewed and they all were like dead-eyed speaking monotone about how good of a time they had. Robin said in the interview that he thinks everyone in the cast signed on because the script was so good. Which, like I said, I think it's a good idea but I don't think it plays out very well. Robin's very dear and almost lifelong friend Christopher Reeve passed away in 2004 as well so it is safe to assume that around this time in 2003, that was something that he was actively dealing with. The opinions on Robin's performance in this movie between the critics seem to be pretty split between people that still think he is doing good work and people that think this performance is emotionless and bland. And I think it is emotionless and bland. The only time he ever shows any emotion in the film is in scenes pertaining to this event that opens the film, which is the character of Alan as a child meeting this other boy and playing with this other boy, and then something happens that he thinks about, I guess, every fucking day for the rest of his life, to the point that he only ever shows any reaction in the film when he sees someone on camera who he think might be that guy, and when he revisits that memory. All the rest of the time, he is literally, I, he was asleep at the wheel. Like, he was, I don't know why he did this movie. He can say what he wants to say all he wants, but I truly do not know why he did this film. The child acting is all pretty bad. The two little boys in the opening scene and this recurring scene of the memory from Alan's childhood, awful acting there. So Robin's character receives the project of doing the rememory for this guy who was like the CEO of the company that came up with the technology for the implant. And so there's a lot of people that want to get their hands on his memories because they think he was a sketchy guy and they want to expose him. One of those guys is Jim Caviezel, Hollywood blacklisted, basically. This review is going to be spoiler spotty, I guess, but Robin's character discovers in editing this guy's memories that he was more than likely sexually abusing his daughter. and. The girl playing the daughter gives a good performance in the scenes that she's in uh, that shows the weight of what she really feels and what she wants to say versus what's rehearsed and what her mom told her to say. She was the only good actor, and I'm sorry, I kept cracking up that the computer setup for the memory editing looks just like the fucking parents' computers in Spy Kids. The chemistry between Robin Williams and Vera Sorvino is literally dead. She is way too hot for him. She is way too young for him. They have zero sexual chemistry. They have one scene together where they have a fight because she discovers that he has like tapes of her in an old relationship. 
that scene is awful. They have a fake fight. They fake scream at each other. She destroys his software and he's like, oh, and he tries to show emotion. But you know when Robin does that yell, it's like, ah, oh, it's like that. But it's so bad. And it's an awful scene. And all of the marketing was playing up the fact that they were two Academy Award winners in this movie just doing a shit, shit job. Voiceover cut-ins in a couple of times that make it seem like the Robin Williams character is losing his mind. Like a bunch of just random clips of things that people have said in the movie will start shouting and he'll lean up against a wall and pretend to look like he's feeling sick. It made it seem like the character was having a psychotic unraveling when he really was not. There's a couple of twists that they're going for that are so lame. He's remembering this event from his childhood differently than it actually happened and you see that character doesn't work because his only motivation, the only driving for it, we don't know why he does what he does. We don't know why, how he got to where he is. We don't know why he is the way that he is. All that we know about him is this one very minor event that happened when he was a child that seems to be his only driving force as a character. And it's just like, why is that all that we get? It never really feels like it has stakes. None of the motivations really made sense. The Jim Caviezel character motivations made sense but he's just giving a weird performance. Like he's trying to be slimy and it's really not working. But then at the end, it seems like he has a change of heart. It's very confusing. So the film ends with Jim Caviezel's character finding out that Robin Williams has one of those implants so that he would be able to see memories as well. And that is forbidden because if you're a cutter, you can't have one of those implants because you'll have memories of seeing other people's stuff. And I guess he somehow finds out that Robin Williams had one, or has one, and would have memories of seeing the project of this guy that he wants to take down. So he fucking shoots him in a graveyard and takes the implant back and is editing it. And he's like, your life will be used for the good, Alan, I promise. And then the film ends. So it's a very confusing ending. I wanted to like it because it is an interesting concept and it is basically, it's virtually unheard of as well but it just didn't deliver on anything that it tried to set up and all the performances were just really god awful. The final cut only grossed about $548,000 domestically and three million internationally. I couldn't find a reported budget on it, but either way, that's pretty small. It generally got mixed to poor reviews. The consensus was that it completely failed to make use of its good premise and its good cast. Roger Ebert gave it three stars out of five and said that the film never finds a way out of the dilemmas it creates, but Robin's acting saved it while Stephen Holden of the New York Times wrote that Robin was giving an emotionless performance, Leslie Philippin of Variety wrote that Robin's underplaying in this movie made Cy Parrish from One Hour Photo look as animated as Mork from Mork and Mindy, which I thought was kind of funny. It's not just that it's understated, it's just that he's not giving you anything. I, I would not necessarily say that I recommend this movie. I guess if you are interested in the concept, maybe if you just want to be bored for an hour and a half, it does kind of go by quickly but I got nothing of merit out of it. If you are interested in doing that for one reason or another, the final cut is available for free with ads, YouTube and Tubi TV. You can also get it for free on Prime and rent it in some of the usual places without ads as well. Next week, I will be looking at yet another Pan Robin film. Surprise, surprise. Um, House of D, it's a period piece where I guess he got criticized for playing someone who is maybe a little slow, which that's gonna be great. I'm sure that'll age really well. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you like to see me review bad shit, and I will see you guys later.